I want to, speaking of cars and driving, I want to lead off today talking about drunk driver checkpoints. All right? That is always a very, very sensitive issue on this program. Drunk driving checkpoints. You know what they are. DUI checkpoints. There are people that think that they are an absolute necessity of society as a deterrent to weed out the winos and to catch the winos if they don't weed themselves out, using this as a deterrent. There are others that would still question the constitutionality. Yeah, of a drunk driving checkpoint. And as to whether they genuinely work to enhancing the goal, the target of hand of getting drunks off the streets, or the common perception is that they're just revenue generators for whichever agency is behind them, you know, as a PD or sheriff or whatever. In, in our neck of the woods, it's a police department. Revenue generator, revenue generator, revenue generator. That's all we hear. Well, born from sour grapes... There's a 23-year-old kid down in San Diego. Well, he's not a kid. He's a young adult. And on one or two occasions in his life, well, specifically two, he's entered DUI checkpoints. One time, he was stone cold sober. And he was still forced to walk the line and blow in the blower and all that, take the sobriety field test. The first time that he was caught in a DUI checkpoint, uh, he says he was stone cold sober but he blew drunk. He's decided to do something about this. Now, it's not against the law what he's doing, but there are certainly sightings of, is it ethical? Is it moral? Does it obstruct justice? There are some groups already after him because he started something called Mr. Checkpoint. Mr. Checkpoint. It's an online service that sends emails or text messages to subscribers to let them know the location of DUI driver's license checkpoints within a 30-mile a radius of their address. All right? I believe if you get the emails, it's free of charge. If you want the texting, it's four ninety nine per month. If there's a pledge involved, if you... Uh, Never drive under the influence. You sign that pledge. You'll receive a 40% discount, dropping the cost to $2.99 a month. And either way, the first 30 days are free if you'd like to avail yourself of Mr. Checkpoint and be notified of when and where all checkpoints are going to be for DUI in a 30-mile radius of your address. Now... What do you make of that? What do you make of that? Immediately. What's your first reaction? Are you angry that somebody's doing that? Is that an obstruction obstruction of law? Is that uh, taking the whole sting, the whole smack out of these DUI checkpoints? Or is it a public service? Should this individual, this young entrepreneur, 23 years old, even be allowed to do this? Already, as you can imagine, there are certain groups, individuals, that want to shut him down. What do you think? Now, again, many of you think these checkpoints are revenue generators. There's an investigation by California Watch last year. Police officers across the state of California impounded six cars for every one DUI arrest for the fiscal year. 2009 to 2010. You may or may not find it ironic that illegal aliens who cannot legally obtain a driver's license in California accounted for as much as 70% of the vehicle seizures. 70%. I think it's a safe assumption that illegal aliens are probably not going to avail themselves of Mr. Checkpoint... Mothers Against Drunk Driving says that these checkpoints are primarily designed to be a deterrent. Are they? I'll tell you where Mr. Checkpoint is going to help out. It's going to help those people that don't drink and drive, that don't want to be caught up in a DUI checkpoint. Right? Is there anything wrong with that? 
There's nothing wrong with that, is there? For those people who do not drive drunk, sometimes you don't want to be bothered. You don't want to have to go through this. Uh, there's always the fear of some other infraction because your driver's license may not be up to date. Your registration may not be up to date. You might not have your, your sticker on your license plate. Still, those are all things you have to do legally. But <laughs> if you don't want to be bothered going again through the DUI checkpoint, I don't think this is a problem at all. And I think... Those are the people who will avail themselves of this service. First off, if somebody is genuinely bombed behind the wheel, are they, what, are, what are they going to do? Are they going to remember where all these checkpoints are and what time and what day they're going to happen? Are they going to put active notes with little yellow stickums all over their windshield so they'll remember? I don't think so. So I think if the intent is still to catch drunks, it'll still work. But for those of us who don't drink and drive... For those of us who don't drink, I don't drink anymore, uh, just to be rid of the inconvenience, this might be a good thing. But for those people who are screaming, foul, end of the world, this shouldn't happen, uh, I don't think they have anything to worry about. This is not going to impact those that are impacted the most by the DUI checkpoints. Agree? Disagree? Dustin, what do you think? I think if the... Uh if the actual goal is to get drunk drivers off the road, that this young man is doing a service to the police departments around the country or around that particular area. Um, I don't agree with DUI checkpoints. I don't think that the actual goal of them is to get drunk drivers off the road. I, I wholeheartedly think that they're just a revenue generating service uh, feature of the police department, but I think he's doing them a favor. I think when there are, you know, reports of DUI checkpoints around people that might be thinking about going out drinking are going to, you know, now not maybe go out to the bar that night. They're going to make sure they have a designated driver. So I think just spreading the fact that there are DUI checkpoints keeps drunk drivers off the road. Aha. Uh -huh. So, okay, if somebody gets a text or an email that later that night and they're planning on going out and maybe getting their nose a little wet, that there's going to be a couple of DUI checkpoints up about and around. So the, the essence there, you think, is not necessarily to avoid them, but to ensure that you get a, a, second, a, a second driver, a designated driver, or you just don't go out at all. So it, exactly. has, a, it has a deterrent factor. Absolutely. I hadn't thought of that, but yep. you may be right. So therefore, he's doing this a public service. He's doing a service on the side of the police department by keeping more drunks off the road. Exactly, and he's doing a service to the people that, you know, maybe just don't want to go through a checkpoint just because they don't want to be bothered, like you were saying. Well, that's my point, yeah. Yeah, maybe they'll be checking that as well just because they don't want to have to go through the hassle of dealing with that. Dustin, thanks. Thank you. You struck upon something there I hadn't really thought about all that much. Uh, 490-5858, what about you? 800-776-5858. Mr. Checkpoint, is this a valuable service? Is it a proper service, uh, or should it just be, should the long arm of the law come and pull the plug? Nobody should know when and where these checkpoints are going to be, even though the law enforcement agencies announce them and the media reports them. But this goes a step further. You can either be emailed or you can be texted within a 30-mile radius of your home. <clears throat> I like what the last caller said. 490-5858-800-776-5858 for KMJ. There's another point to be made about this Mr. Checkpoint thing that we're talking about here for just a couple of moments on KMJ. This new innovation by a young 23-year-old entrepreneur, if you just joined us, that would text you where all of the given checkpoints for DUI would be within a 30-mile radius of your home or email, whatever you want. Uh, and I'll, I'll make that after we say a couple of words here to John. John, you're next on KMJ. Hi. Hello. Hi. Go, yeah, ahead. Um, Go right ahead. Uh, my point would be uh, they, they should do it. They should. I'm, I'm, the way this guy is setting it up is good. Because I've been through several of the Fresno DUI checkpoints. Yeah. And if I hadn't had my Bible beside me, just coming back from church, it would have made me go through the test. Why, well, the Bible got you off the hook? Yes. 
Well, why would they, why would they have made you go through the test? I mean, you weren't you weren't smelling like alcohol or driving squirrely, were you? No, no, that's the point. I was just driving and happened to get caught in it. Oh, okay, all right. Well, I mean, you have to be a little. You have to give some telltale signs when you're in there uh, that you are a little gassed before they can do anything about it, John. Thanks. Although some people feel that uh, they're just checking people out because they want to check people out and see if they can catch them on anything so they can build their revenues. Uh, some people think that they're just absolutely unholy, that they are, you know, revenue traps, revenue generators. They're there solely for that purpose. And whether you're sober or not, they might find some other infraction with which to catch you on some money and uh, take it to the bank. But yet you might note in the statistics that they delivered, this Mr. Checkpoint, which came from, uh, a, you know, a, a very valid California source. I would repeat it. It's California Watch. I would repeat again that 70% of the vehicle seizures in DUI checkpoints are from illegal aliens. Now, that would indicate... The bulk of the problem is right there. Correct? That's the bulk of the problem. Uh, so, why don't we do something about that? that w- and, and there are individuals in the state assembly right now that would give the illegal aliens a driver's license. Now, do you think with a driver's license there's going to be any less figures? Less than, you, that'll lessen that 70% figure of illegal aliens driving around bombed? I don't think so. I mean, what's a driver's license going to do? That's not going to sober them up. That's not going to stop them from any existing habits they have. So all the more reason not to give them driver's licenses and to specifically attack that problem as is. I don't know um, if cops have the right in California to, to basically do something about an illegal alien if they're seized in a drunk driving checkpoint and, uh, you know, throw them back to ICE and get them on the road to exportation, like some states do. I don't even know if we attempt that in California. But if 70% of the, the offenders are illegal aliens, why the hell don't we? I think that's really important. And, well, let me, let me grab Carl here. Go ahead, Carl. Yeah, the kid's got an absolute right to do it. He's disseminating public knowledge in a profitable way. And uh, in addition to the people that you mentioned who use that service, I think people who go out and party and get drunk will also use that service, but... They have a right to do that. And the last thing is, half the cops do is revenue generating. That's tickets, uh, whatnot, red light cameras. They're generating revenue mm-hmm. instead of fighting other types of crime. Mm-hmm. But I will say, I mean, the drunkenness thing, you know, Mothers Against Drunk Driving was, was founded by mothers who lost their children to drunk drivers. Mm-hmm. Something needs to be done. And sometimes libertarians like you and me, I guess, or so protect our rights, but they need to do something about drunk drivers. I mean, as you sh- stated in the past, you don't want them um, at one place up north where they were coming out of their place drunk and the cops would get them went right when they got in their car. I mean, you were against that as a lot of libertarians were, but how can they be proactive without doing something that infringes on some rights of some people? Well, to travel, they, but to, to travel down that road and answer your question, I think the answer is on the other end of the enforcement, and that's within the judiciary system, uh, the judicial system, that I, I believe the punishment for drunk drivers in California is way too easy. Uh, I, I prefer the, uh, when I lived over in the U.K., if you got popped one time, uh, you, you lost your license for either a year or life. I, I can't remember, but it was so... The, the, it, it was so big, uh, and your insurance over there just went, it, was, it became absolutely an obscene amount of money after you were popped for drunk driving. I think if we do things like that, people will think twice. I think that's a more notable deterrent than these DUI checkpoints. I can see that point. Well, anyway, nice discussion. <laughs> My pleasure. Thank you. And you're right. I am a bit libertarian uh, on this type of subject. Tim, you're next on KMJ. Hi. I, I think it is a deterrent uh, to drunk drivers, somewhat. Matt is right. I also think that it's uh, a revenue generator. I think it's also against your civil rights. But I think the website is a great tool for someone who smokes as much pot as my, my wife does. <laughs> oh, my God. Really? For real? Yeah. Roll up into one of those checkpoints and roll down a window and see what's going to happen. 